about 1972, my friend and I, uh, Dave, we hitchhiked to uh, Lake Kalamalka Owl's Nest Resort. The purpose was to uh, go see his girlfriend. Now his girlfriend lived in Edmonton, we lived in Edmonton, but uh, his girlfriend's family, they um, had a campsite at Owl's Nest Resort for two weeks and Dave wanted to go see her so he wanted me to go with him so we hitchhiked to there. At Owl's Nest Resort they have these things called paddle boards. Now I don't think paddle boards are a thing anymore. Uh, you have, uh, I don't know what they're called, boogie boards. They're shorter than surfboards but in those days these little paddle boards uh, were something that you could rent and take out on the lake. Now on the lake across from Owl's Nest Resort is a gigantic diving rock and it's got deep water that's safe to dive in and it's really dramatic. I mean you can climb up, I don't know how many feet it is, but it, it's pretty high. Uh, I don't know, maybe 40 feet, 30, 40 feet in the air. High enough. And so all the teenagers would go out there and jump off this rock into the lake. So Dave and I uh, decided we're going to take our paddle boards across the lake. Well, I, I mean, Dave and I were like that. We just wanted an adventure. We set a goal for ourselves and we'd just go do it. So we rented these paddle boards and we jumped on and we paddled across the lake. Now, on the way over, uh, Dave's paddleboard was starting to sink and we just got to the far shore. And uh, in fact, I think we were trying for the diving rock, but we couldn't get there. The, the diving rock might have been another day. Regardless, we got to the other side. Uh, there was nothing there. Absolutely nothing. So we're on the wild shore of this lake and Dave looks at his paddleboard and the back of the paddleboard had a drain hole with normally a plug in it. And my little cork was in my plug and his was missing. So that explains why he was sinking. Now we had to think about this because the lake is a long ways across. I'd say maybe a mile, I'm just guessing. We had to get across uh, and back. I mean, it's it's the uh, it's afternoon, but we don't want to get stuck there overnight or anything. We couldn't carry these things back; they're heavy. So, what Dave did was he broke off a branch. He's very uh, inventive. Dave broke off a dead tree, which is about. Uh, an inch and a half diameter which is the same diameter as the hole and we had no tools with us so he had to just break off this branch uh, and then he had to take a rock and beat the end of it so it's kind of flat and then he jammed it in the hole so he's got this paddleboard with a dead tree sticking out of it and I offered to him I said um, I weigh less than you so you know, we can trade boards, you can get across faster. And, and my plan was that he and I both would make it across and the paddleboard would sink slower because I'm lighter. He refused. He said, no, I'll, I'll take my chances with this. So he and I set out. Okay, so halfway across, his is sinking. Now, I'm trying to remember, we... We didn't have life jackets. That was part of the problem. So we're halfway across, his board is sinking and I could see it was sinking. And I told him again, I said, just trade me and uh, we'll do our plan, like my plan. Now it was more urgent because I said, look, you take, you're more, you're stronger than me you take the good board and you get in. You'll get in faster than me. And I'm lighter, so I'll take the sinking board. Finally, he agreed. We switched boards 
and he swam off and I could see he was really power paddling. I could see those little rooster tails of water shooting up from his hands over and over and over and over again. And we're, we're uh, I don't know, half to three quarters of the way across. He disappeared out of sight and I'm, I'm pushing this board now. The board is pretty much full of water. And it was a bad design. There was no styrofoam inside the board. It was just hollow. So I had this, these paddle boards were just crudely made out of plywood. So this board is now submerged and I'm kind of pushing it along. I don't have a life jacket. I'm swimming and I'm trying to conserve energy. That was my absolute number one priority was conserve energy. So I'm just gently pushing this thing along and I'm trying to achieve whatever buoyancy I could and <laughs> this thing goes like a submarine it's underwater and I'm hanging on to it now now I am supporting the board I am wasting energy trying to keep myself above water and the board above water why because I don't want to be responsible paying for this board <laughs> so for me you know, $40 worth of lumber, that would have broke me. <laughs> so I'd rather die. So, uh, just as this is happening, I look off in the distance and I see this, this boat coming my way. Well, wouldn't you know it, Dave had made it to the far shore, ran to God help, found somebody with a boat, and, and remembered where I was, and my little head is just sticking barely above the surface of the water. They found me and they dragged me aboard and they got the board aboard. So we went back and, you know, Dave and I gave him an earful for having unsafe boards. Meanwhile, he and I didn't even wear life jackets. That's crazy. More to come.